With the new Dune movie coming out, I couldn't miss the opportunity to make a Dune-themed wood carving. Because I'm a huge fan of the franchise, and I've read 21 of the books. Like most projects, this started in the design phase. In a world controlled by the spice, the only place to find it is in the dunes. The planet is orbited by two moons. I drew the whole design in Adobe Animate using a Wacom drawing tablet. I taped all the pages together and put some carbon paper under the design to transfer the lines. I started with a bench chisel and a carving gouge. I made stop cuts all the way around the border and removed a chip. I traced around all the main features with a V-tool. I relieved material from the sky using a wide gouge. I also did stop cuts around the sandworm. Now that the background is relieved, I need to shape each element to give it volume, starting with the body segments. A landscape relief is largely an optical illusion, utilizing light and shadows to simulate depth. So sometimes I clamp a light bulb on one end of my bench, which helps me see which angles will catch the light. I started by outlining the main features of the head with a V-tool. Then I rounded over the basic shape with a gouge.
carving is done, I want to add some colors and shading. I want it to be really subtle, so I'll make tinted polyurethane and apply it in several layers. I sealed the carving by spraying it with thinned polyurethane. For the sky, I mixed poly with red trans tint dye, testing it on the back of the carving to get a strength I liked. It took about six layers to get to the red color I wanted. I did the same thing on the sandworm using a walnut colored dye. I made a similar concoction with black sumi ink and brushed it on certain areas to add shading. This will make it look good even when the lighting is bad. This part makes me nervous. I like the way it looks right now, but I had planned to carve it with individual scales like a pangolin. I could ruin it, but I'm gonna try. To get the spacing right, I modeled a cylinder in SketchUp. Then used sections from that cylinder to lay out the spacing of the scales. This spacing creates a forced perspective on the body segments, exaggerating how cylindrical they look. At this point, I'm going to add a realistic texture to the moons. To achieve a shimmering gray appearance, I'll mix polyurethane with graphite powder, mica powder, and titanium dioxide. The base coat was made using titanium dioxide and graphite. This gave it a shiny light gray pigment. While the polyurethane was still wet, I dusted them with graphite and mica powder and blew off the excess. Then I sealed it with some spray polyurethane. After a few layers of that and some added shading, I had a texture I really liked. So far, all the layers of polyurethane have been gloss, because that's the clearest kind. This many layers of satin or matte would become cloudy. So once the coloring was done, I brushed a thin layer of satin poly over the whole carving to take down the shine. I painted the teeth with a pearlescent white acrylic paint.
Thank you so much for watching. This video was really fun to make. I hiked up a mountain twice. I went on a sand dune and endured some pretty strong winds. And I rode a giant sandworm, which is not as easy as it looks. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and consider clicking on one of my other videos. Bye.